G'day, I'm James Martin from High March. I'd like to enlist. My grandfather, Sergeant James Harold Martin, was the first South Australian to volunteer at the uh, call for volunteers of uh, World War One. This is the true story of Digger, the bravest dog I know to have served as king and country in the Great War, side by side with his master James Harold Martin and the men of the 1st and 2nd Division Signal Company. Fighting for king and country was what everyone, every volunteer wanted to do back then. He was very um, proud of his um, wartime effort and he used to attend um, something every Anzac day. He was an electrician by trade, so did his training in Broadmeadows attached to the 1st Division Signal Company. The straggler had no place to call home, attaching himself to the first man he happened upon as they were returning to their barracks, so they adopted him. He actually wandered into our grandfather, up to our grandfather when he was in uh, training in Broadmeadows in Victoria, and he adopted our grandfather, not the other way around. <laughs> Where did you come from? Hello. Digger was uh, a bulldog come boxer variety, I guess, uh, and became mascot for his unit. Hey, what about, uh, we call him Digger? Sure. Yeah. We'll get a little mascot. Hello. Oh, Go on, Digger. Hello, Digger. Go on, Digger. Go on, Digger. <laughs> on the 20th of October 1914, the unit boarded HMAT A10 Carew in Melbourne. Digger went too, smuggled inside a kit bag. The destination was Egypt, and then off to Gallipoli. He actually had um, this photograph of the pyramids and the Sphinx, and that was his pride and joy. At dawn on the 25th of April, the signalers of the 1st Division made it to that lethal shore. Digger was huddled between them. Can't exactly pick him out in the photo because many of them have got their heads down with their slouch hats and it's a good, a proud feeling to, to, to think that he would be in that. There's a photo of him in a boat at the, that first landing at Gallipoli. As artillery rained and bullets whizzed around, they dug in. He was a signalman um, and uh, laying their lines, building Watson's Pier, he was involved with that. He actually laid lines behind enemy lines. Probably the most dangerous jobs there. Be 24 hours a day, seven days a week job. Just to keep those communications open because uh, without communications, you can't have a military uh, operation. Uh, they would have all been overrun in, in, a, in a matter of days. They had to have communication from all the strong points, all the, the main points where they were uh, engaged, and that would be through cable, laying cables to telephones to their uh, small strong points, machine gun posts, uh, right back to the command post. While the futile conflict dragged on, Digger's courage in the trenches and in the line of hostile fire made him more than just the unit's mascot. He would have been with Mr Martin, close by, his um, soulmate, you know, keeping an eye on him and they look after each other. Um, but he would have been morale booster for all the other soldiers around him. If cats have nine lives, then surely Digger had already seen off a score and ten more storming the Turkish lines at Lone Pine. Be blowing out there with your legs shot off or, you know, wounded, dying, bleeding, and a little dog comes up and he's there crawling up to you. I thought, my God, I'm going to be saved here. What a hope. A little bit of hope. The evacuation order came in December 1915. The Anzacs slipped away quietly, leaving behind 6,000 souls to the mercy of their enemy. For the war dog and his unit, the worst battlefields of Europe were still ahead. 
He went on to the Western Front. 12th of November, 1917. Dear mother and father, greetings from the muddy fields of Belgium. He was uh, in Poziers uh, and also uh, Ypres in uh, Belgium. So Digger could hear the um, shells being, being fired um, and knowing that uh, they would contain gas would go and alert his, uh, my grandfather and uh, his fellow soldiers to uh, put on their gas masks. Things are going well here, although things are wet and uncomfortable. I do miss your Sunday roast, Mum. Food here is a bit scarce. Incredible what they would have had to had to face the the, the fear and the, the noise, um, the, the the conditions, the, the mud, the rain, the, the cold, the heat. Um, just incredible uh, that a dog would stay by someone's side through all of that is uh, quite amazing. Our mascot Digger is still with us. He was gassed, but he's getting the best medical care. <laughs> he likes giving those Huns a hard time. We pray we'll be home soon, Mum. Your son, James. The Posse is amidst the stench of death and utter destruction. The first division came so close to losing him. Reports of the day in, uh, on the Western Front in France so that uh, Digger went over the top, over the top of the trenches uh, 16 times with uh, his uh, unit soldiers. That's just a guess, I would say went over 200 times maybe. He bears the marks of his wounds, a hole in the top of the lower jaw, three teeth gone, blind in the right eye, deaf in the left ear. He had to be put under chloroform to have the bullet extracted. There's a postcard of Digger on a, a Union Jack flag, uh, and they sold those postcards to raise funds for the ointment to um, help Digger from his wounds from the gassing. While convalescent in England, he transferred to the Flying Corps. On one occasion, he went up 8,000 feet with the late Flight Lieutenant Gibbs, and has, they say, flown all over England and Scotland. Towards the end of the war, uh, and was actually based in uh, Hitchin in England, where he trained further signalmen. And that's actually where he billeted with a family and met my grandmother. He was always a venturesome dog, but he was invalided home a couple of months ago and now has to lead a more or less humdrum life. He had a leather collar with um, our grandfather's name on it and his name. He was recognised for his three and a half years of service mm. and also he was given a campaign collar which is a metal collar and it has um, the medals of the campaigns that he was in plus the RSL medal. Digger marched proudly with his unit for the last time on Empire Day, May 24, 1919. Digger heard the fireworks, thought that he was back in um, the war, tried to jump the fence and burst a blood vessel doing it. He crawled back to our grandfather's bed and died on the bed. He was loyal to the end. I believe he suffered from what we now call post-traumatic stress disorder. Look out, Charlie, there's three over there. He was known to, in the middle of the night, run up and down the hallway with a uh, rifle. Um, my mother recalled laying in bed and hearing this and it scared her all the time. Um, he thought he was still in the battle, he had extreme nightmares. We know about the medals. We're really not sure what happened to them. After he passed away, my grandmother had a breakdown and she had a big bonfire in the backyard and we think that's where 
they went, along with his lovely photograph of the pyramids and the Sphinx. The good thing about it is that the memory lives on. What an inning. What a loving, wonderful dog. Yeah, right. A hero dog, absolutely.